Girls. I am Captain Chuck from Damned Rocks Charters in beautiful downtown Key West, Florida. Today we are going to show you Dallas's uh, brand new 55 gallon saltwater aquarium. For all those reefers out there, you all might be interested in something like this. We, uh, back a couple of months ago, you all might have remember Hurricane Irma came down to the Florida Keys and just gave us good old fashioned tail whipping. Destroyed a whole lot of stuff. It uh, took away our previous tank and Dallas has rebuilt another one. This is probably volume number four of the episode on how to reef up and rebuild a saltwater tank. And this is going to be again a 55 gallon aquarium. Today's show is going to be concentrated on Chetamorphia. And Dallas is going to show you or tell you all about Chetamorphia and what it does in your tank and for your tank and she's going to explain the whole process of what the hell a refusium is. Sounds cool. So sit down, strap in, hold on and we're going to get to the refusium. If you like what you're seeing go ahead and hit the like button. It's going to be up here at the end of the end of the video and subscribe to the channel. So we're going to bring you all kinds of stuff all through the winter and even into the summer where we're going to go out catch different fish and put them in the aquarium because she likes to get them really small and then when they get big somehow she lets them all go back out to the reef again. So it's going to be an ever-changing episode, never changing show of Dallas's Fish Tank Aquarium. I'll see you all on the other side. Remember, like, subscribe. Right, so here we are. We are looking at what's known as the refusium. It's the place you send your husband when he puts you on film when you don't want to be. So I've been in the refusium a lot. Now a lot of people would ask what the hell are what, what the hell is a refusium? Well Dallas is about to tell you what a refusium actually is. It's an integral part of the science project that is your aquarium. It has nothing to do, well it has everything to do. The top part of your aquarium is where you see all the cool stuff in the fish, but the bottom part of the aquarium, aka the refusium. No, it's the sun. So the refusium's the, just this section. This section is the refusium? Yes. Where the, the whole thing is the salt. Correct. Alright, so now that we've uh, got it out, the uh, scientist over here is telling you what that is. And you might wonder what the hell you're staring at. What are you staring at, Dallas? That is a little clump of Chetomorphia algae that I had ordered before Hurricane Irma and it went on back order, and it didn't come, and then the storm came, and then it showed up on our doorstep after we got home, we had evacuated for nine days, came home, and about a week later, this package showed up. It had been sitting in Miami, I guess, on a shelf, and it was still alive. I couldn't believe it. By then, my tank was dead. So I took the little piece of algae, trying to give it a chance to live, and put it on the step in the canal that led down into the water. And it stayed there. I guess the storm was what, two and a half months ago now? Mm -hmm. So it was down in there for, for one and a half months, and a friend of mine needed a piece. It had grown, so I gave him a piece. And then the little teensy piece that was left now grew into this clump. It looks terrible. So this is like the blob. You can see how big it is. It's, she it's cut a, half of it off and gave it to a friend of ours is what she's trying to say. No, I gave more than that to him. This piece grew back just from being on the staircase in the back. Well, my tank is it's finally starting to cycle. I have some little fish in there. And I've now put, put this little clump of algae in there. It looks really beat up and tattered sort of like our house after the storm. And uh, I've ordered a new light, a Zet light, um, from Bulk Reef Supplies. And uh, um, so it has the right spectrum to hopefully help it grow. I ho hope I don't kill it before the light gets here. This light should be able to keep it alive, though. Well, I mean, that thing has survived a hurricane. Well, it was in storage in a bag on a shelf somewhere. So, the <laughs> most <laughs> austere circumstances ever, and you're worried about getting a light for it. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I think it'll make it. it. So, what does that what does that thing do? What's its purpose in its life? Its purpose it is to help remove some of the nutrients, excess nutrients that you do not need in the reef tank 
and that would be nitrates and phosphates. It also is a home for your rotifers and your copepods, which will breed and live in that little tiny critters that will get sucked over the overflow and blown back into the tank by the return pump, which the fish really, really like, and it's real healthy and good for them. So basically they're fish food, rotifers and copepods? Yes. Can you see them? What do they look uh, like? When they're full grown, you can see them a little bit. They look like sea fleas, just scooting about. Um, they're better than brine shrimp, but kind of the same thing as far as live food that kicks around. Who eats them? Everybody will eat them. Everybody will eat them. Everybody that can catch them. Crabs will even eat them if they can grab a hold of them. So, all right, to so catch everybody. Everybody will eat them. To catch everybody up on this side. Most people like to get them because they want to have little tiny fish that like to pick little tiny stuff like uh, mandarins and sand sifting gobies. We'll get them because they'll live in the sand. Um, so, the it, it's a double purpose. It, it's a home for the the copepods and the rotifers to live, but it's also going to reduce the nitrates and the phosphates. If if it grows, it could fill this bottom chamber, and I guess we'll keep that posted. I guess so. All right. So to catch you up, if you didn't see the last uh, YouTube video that we put out, what we did is we started from scratch again. Dallas built a brand new tank from the ground up. Brand new rocks, brand new sand, brand new everything. And right now what we're doing is what's called cycling the tank. So we went out and got, I don't want to say trash fish, but... Uh, it's a little tough, a little tough fish, a little pork fish, a little uh, sergeant major, and some little like, little striped, like, little grunt-like looking things. So, and, uh, and we're starting to see, we're starting to see a little bit of algae growing. That's why I decided it was time to go ahead and put my little clump of algae in the refusium. Because if algae is growing in the main display, then obviously I'm starting to see some nitrates and, and phosphates, probably more nitrates. And that is what feeds the algae. And uh, we're going to try to see how this does. And I guess we'll see in a couple weeks with the new light on it, how much bigger it gets. It's about the size of a softball right now. All right, so you can put your two fingers down there, so I guess that's... Yeah, it's about the size of a, size softball. Of a softball. So you'll see that obviously grow. It's very nasty looking from being on the step of the canal. So I guess in, in layman's terms, what you could say is this portion of the tank, the science project, the bottom portion of the tank, the refusium uh, that, you're, that you're calling it, is eating all the nitrites and the nitrates and stuff that the fish are pooping and no the nitrates and the phosphates okay that that the excrement of the fish in the tank itself but and it's not allowing that to recirculate to the top part of the tank to keep your keep your water clear and everything no it's nothing to do with keeping the water clear it's just keeping the quality of the water up okay the protein skimmer the uv sterilizer and the filter sock help to keep it clear and then once I get starting getting, if it starts getting cloudy, I'm going to be adding a, my carbon reactor, media reactor, and uh, we'll be adding that in later. Right. And then I just got a Tom's uh, brine shrimp hatchery, which I think I might add in here, and we're going to test that out and see how that works. Too. We're going to hatch our own brine shrimp? Well, I've been hatching my own brine shrimp, but I'm going to hatch them right in the refusium. Right in here. We're going to hatch them in there? Yes. <laughs> so we got sea monkeys. Uh, yeah, they're sea monkeys, but we're not going to keep them as pets. Now, do you have to catch them out of there? Will they just get no, sucked up? No, they'll, and... they'll get sucked through. Oh. They'll get sucked through. So a self-contained brine shrimp hatchery. And if they get too heavy, then I'll, yeah, I'll get a light and get them to one side, and then I'll, I'll suck them out and, and siphon them out and blow them up into the tank for the main, for the fish. Future models on refusium and science projects in Dallas's aquarium. Yes. All right. I think that's long enough. You do? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to talk about this no more. What do you want to talk about next? I don't know. We'll think of something later. Just what about that thing? The protein skimmer? That's not... Up next, we'll be talking about the pro protein skimmer. So, uh, see you on the next episode. Y'all have a good one.